Today we'll simulate the brittle failure of a component by setting up a dynamic analysis using Hypermesh and LSDyna. In this tutorial, we'll observe the brittle shattering of a glass bottle when it is impacted by a rigid sphere traveling at a speed of 15 meter per second. The crack propagation, displacement and stress results will be observed during post-processing. So let's get right into it. I have already created a base model K file which includes all the parts required for the analysis meshed using hex elements. We will use this K file to start setting up the analysis. The link for this file is provided in the description. Feel free to download it and follow this video step by step to get a clear understanding of the overall procedure. The first step is to assign proper section and material to all the parts in the model. We will also define the material failure criteria so that we can observe brittle cracking of the glass bottle when impacted by the sphere. By using the select user profile icon, make sure that the user profile is set to lsdyna. Now we will import the base model k file. Select the file in proper selection box. With all other settings as default, import the model. Now let's enable the solver browser from the view panel. As you can see, there are three parts in the model, the sphere, bottle and the bottle holder. Hex mesh has already been created for all the parts. Now create section, section solid. Keep all settings as default. Create mat 1 to 50 rigid. Enter proper name for this material. We will enter the default mechanical properties of steel. For this analysis, we are using the unit system kg, mm, millisecond, kilonewton, and gigapascal. Now let's create a brittle material for the glass bottle. For this, we will use the Matte 1110 Johnson Holmquist Ceramics. Enter appropriate name for the brittle material. There are a lot of parameters that need to be specified to accurately define the brittle behavior of the glass material. This is the most crucial part of the analysis setup. We will enter the data for standard glass. This data can be found from material data sheets or research papers. I will not explain every parameter in detail as it is beyond the scope of this video. Feel free to tweak these values to observe the variations in final result of the simulation. Let's assign the section and material to all the parts. For sphere, set section as solid and select rigid material in material field. For bottle, set section as solid and select the brittle glass material. For holder, select section as solid and assign the rigid material in selection box. Now we will define the material failure criteria so that we can see the glass shatter due to the impact. Press Ctrl F and type erosion. Add the material erosion property to the model. Let's enter the maximum effective strain value as 0.01. We will cap the maximum principal stress at 0.15 gigapascal. Set number of conditions as 1. Now select the glass material to link this erosion criteria to it. To define the interaction between different parts of the model, 
Now we will specify contacts and define additional settings for the contacts to work properly. After the contacts have been defined, we will specify the boundary conditions for the dynamic analysis. Gravity loading will also be implemented in this simulation. Let's take a look at how this is done. Create, contact, automatic surface to surface, automatic surface to surface. Provide a name to it. Let's switch the slave and master selection boxes to components. For this contact, select the sphere part as slave. Select the bottle as master entity. Enter value of static friction coefficient as 0 0.2 and that of dynamic as 0 0.1. Check box next to additional cards and set value of soft as 1. Now we will duplicate this contact for the bottle and holder parts. Select slave entity as bottle. Select the holder part as master. Let's change the static friction coefficient value to 0.5. Keep all other settings similar to the first contact. Now create boundary SPC node. We will constrain the lower face of the holder for all degrees of freedom. Use the by face selection criteria to select all the nodes. Create the boundary constraints. Let's hide all the constraints for now. Create Initial Initial Velocity Generation Switch the selection type to Part ID. Now select the Sphere part. We will assign a velocity of 15 mm per millisecond in positive x direction. Lastly, we will define gravity loading for all the parts. Create, define, curve. Create a new curve and specify a name for it. We will define a constant gravity load of 9.81 e minus 3 millimeter per millisecond square. Update the curve. Now create load load body y select the gravity loading curve in proper selection box as gravity is along negative y direction enter multiplier value as minus 1 now we'll specify the additional analysis settings these settings will determine the total duration for which the analysis will run and also the time interval after which the output files will be written out. This will also help us extract specific outputs from the analysis for post-processing. To specify the total runtime for the analysis, create the termination control card. Enter end time value as 20 millisecond. Create, Control, Control Energy. We will switch to the second option for all the fields to calculate energy dissipated by all forms during the impact. To output the results for post-processing, 
add the database binary d3 plot card to the model. Let's use value of dt as 0.2 millisecond. To output global statistics like work and energy, add the database option card. Check the box next to GL stat and set DT value as 0.2. Do the same for match sum option. The analysis setup is now complete. Let's export the K file so that it can be run using the LSDyna manager. Make sure to use underscore in place of space while entering all file names. As the analysis setup is now complete, we will use the LSDyna manager to run this analysis using the LSDyna solver. After the analysis run is complete, we will observe the results in Hyperview. After opening the LSDyna manager, Click on Start LSDyna Analysis button. Now select the K file which we exported from Hypermesh. Enter the N CPU and memory options as per hardware specifications available. Click on Run to launch the LSDyna solver. This will take some time to solve. I will pause the video and resume once this is done. The analysis is complete and normal termination was achieved. Let's view the results in Hyperview. Select the D3 plot file and apply the results. Open the contours tab and apply the displacement results. Let's set the legend type as dynamic and numeric format as fixed. Play the result animation. We can clearly see the brittle cracking of the glass bottle. Let's view the stress results. Select type as P1 major. With averaging method as simple, apply the results. We can see the stress value being capped at 0.15 GPa as specified. Let's split the graphics area into two parts. In the second window, change the template to Hypergraph 2D. Now select the glstat file from working directory. Select energy, kinetic energy, potential energy and total energy. Energy. Select proper unit system from the options provided. Apply the results. We can see the total energy is conserved during the impact. This validates our analysis setup. We have successfully observed the brittle failure of a glass component under impact loading conditions using Hypermesh and LSDyna solver. And this is how we can perform a dynamic analysis using Hypermesh and LSDyna. If you like this video, please hit the red subscribe button and give a thumbs up, it helps a lot. Make sure to follow me on social media to stay updated about latest video content. Thanks for watching.